Hello, this is Jesse Gerzinski, and I'm here today to talk to you about some of the open source content that was in the recent announced materials. Um, but before I dig into uh, the specifics of, of what I chose to include in the announce, uh, I did want to back up and summarize. Uh, you know, a lot has happened in terms of this 5733 OPS offering that we have had available for some time. In 2016, as you can see, we've actually added six or seven new options to this product. So we went from uh, just having options one, two, and three to having 10 full options. Um, and you can see the list here. You know, some of these are really self-explanatory. We have various versions of Node.js that we've delivered. Uh, we delivered Python 2 for compatibility reasons. A lot of things in that option seven, uh, which we call tools, and, and actually uh, everything that I'm going to talk about in the next few minutes is actually shipped in OPS option seven, which again, we vaguely call that tools. And for what it's worth, option seven is a really exciting option. It's one that I always tell people to watch this space. Um, option seven is, is really this, this kind of catch-all for a lot of these smaller, lighter weight uh, tools that are useful for a number of people running open source on, on IBM I. So I'm going to de delve into some of those. So as you can see, we delivered a lot in 2016. I'm not going to go into details on any of those. Um, but into 2017, uh, and therefore these announced materials, we did deliver a few more things that I wanted to talk about. Um, one such thing is a really neat utility called rsync. Um, as you can see here, if, if you're not familiar, rsync lets you synchronize files and directories across, um, you know, from one system to another. It also just is an easy way for you to copy a directory structure from point A to point B. And one of the cool points about rsync is that it is a cross-platform solution. It's supported on many different operating systems, Mac, Windows, Linux, other, uh, as well as now on IBM I. So you can now use rsync to keep files in sync between different IBM I systems. And again, some people use rsync just for moving stuff around. Um, it, it's really configurable in terms of how does rsync determine what files need updating if you're using it as a synchronization tool. You can determine based on timestamps, checksums, file sizes, and, and you can turn all of these various checks on and off, and there's a trade-off between uh, performance and accuracy there. But uh, it, it is a really powerful tool for, for moving files around, keeping files in sync, and again, you can use it between different IBM I partitions. You can also use it to synchronize and move files between the IBM I and some client workstation as well. Or, virtually anywhere that supports SSH. This is built on top of SSH. So rsync, RSync is a really uh, powerful tool in my opinion, but it's also important to note, in, you know, this is one of those examples where our open source offerings serve more than just application developers. Right, a couple slides ago, you saw the list of all the stuff we delivered in 2016, and a lot of it is uh, language runtimes. We have things like Git that give you version control. Um, and a lot of the stuff that we've offered is there to enable you to write more modern applications on IBM I. So therefore, the application developer is the target audience for, for some of those things, obviously. But our sync is, is one example of how we're also delivering value to other people in the organization. Something like rsync could be very useful, for instance, to a system administrator, um, web page administrator, all, all kinds of roles uh, you could find good utility for with rsync. So it really sends a good message that way, in my opinion. Another one of the things we've delivered is wget, which is a, a really simple utility. It lets you go fetch things. It lets you download files from the internet. It lets you download files from FTP sites. If you have your own internal network, it can use uh, HTTP, HTTPS, uh, FTP, you know, to fetch from intranet locations as well. Um, primarily, it's a tool designed for non-interactive use. 
you know, you have a script and the script at some point needs to go fetch something uh, from some other place and you put in a very simple wget command to go pull down that file. So very, very simple. Another thing we've delivered, which is really along those same lines, is curl. Um, curl also lets you fetch things from the internet or intranet. Uh, it also lets you fetch things from HTTP, HTTPS, FTP, um, supports a lot of the things that wget supports. Uh, you can call it from a script in a non-interactive fashion, fully supports that. But it also supports a lot of extra features as well. Uh, for instance, as you can see on this slide, if you have to do HTTP authentication, um, HTTP post and get, those are things that curl can do that, that wget can't. Um, you can also do FTP sends, FTP uploads with curl. But one of the more important things with curl is that Yes, it's a command. Yes, you can do all of these things with this command, but it's also a shared library. That means that it also delivers APIs so that your programs can do these same things. Your programs can now call the curl APIs to do uploads, downloads, fetches, uh, you know, with all of these advanced functions, uh, which, is, which is obviously very enabling. Um, in fact, the next uh, enhancement I'm going to talk about is uh, an example of that. Um, you know, Git. You know, earlier I mentioned uh, most of the things I'm talking today, talking about today, are in option seven of five seven three three OPS. This is the exception. Git is actually shipped in option six, um, and we've and respun Git uh, this time around. It's actually available now for those viewing the webcast. Um, and actually all of this stuff is, is available now already. Um, but you can now, from Git, clone and interact with repositories that exist out on uh, the World Wide Web or even on your local intranet. And of course, you could guess the reason we can add that support to Git is because we added curl. So curl provided the APIs that Git knows how to use. And so we respawn Git to be able to use those APIs. So in this example, you can see I'm doing a Git clone of a repository that's sitting out on the public website, github.com. So very, very simple to do these things. And so that's a really important enhancement to Git for, for a lot of open source people who are doing uh, things on Bitbucket or GitHub. So that's, that's really cool to see. Um, and that, that really wraps things up with what I chose to include in the announce for these, these announce cycles. But I did want to mention a couple things before I sign off today. One such thing is that uh, we've enhanced the display of our options. When you go to Golik Pigum option 10, uh, when we spun the product back in, I believe, 2014, we didn't know what the options were going to be, right? We didn't know, for instance, that option six would be Git and that option seven would be tools and, and uh, where Python would lie and things like that. So when we shipped the product, we just had very generic names for all of the options within that product. So if you go to go like Pigum option 10, you see a list of your options and it doesn't really tell you much about those individual options, as you can see. Uh, we're now with the latest set of PTFs. We've actually enhanced that. Uh, it's an English-only enhancement, so it's not translated. Uh, most of the text here is not translatable anyway. But uh, as you can see, with the latest sets of PTFs, um, now you have human-readable, sensible descriptions for the 10 options that we've we've so far delivered. So, so to some people, uh, that that can be a really important enhancement. And the last thing I want to say, I do believe Common is going to uh, publish these, this short presentation as a PDF, so you will have access to these links. But in the open source world for IBMI, we actually have a very good community that has formed. Uh, we have presence in a number of different places. This is a subset of those places. And so these are really important links for you if you're interested in getting started or even exploring more in the open source realm on IBMI. 
Um, we have uh, a new blog that I have uh, just recently started writing for up on IBM Systems Magazine, so you can go find that. Uh, and then there's some other really important links here as well. If you're interested in the actual product web page for OPS, you can find that, as well as, like I mentioned, all of these community links. We're on Twitter, we're on River, we're on LinkedIn. We have uh, a wiki up on Bitbucket, which I would highly recommend to anybody who's uh, just getting started or, or diving more into what we have available. So uh, in my closing words, I did just want to urge you to go, please check out what we have available and check out our community. And if you have questions, feel free to ask and, and hopefully someone's around to uh, help you out and, and get you rolling. So again, that's all I had for today. I appreciate you listening and I hope you enjoy the rest of our announced webcast. Thank you.